I am sure lots of people know what a tromp is, but for those that don't, it's an air compressor with no moving parts. It uses a property of water to compress air. It consists of four main bits. There's an inlet pipe where the water comes in and mixes with the air. Then there's an expansion chamber, so the, the air comes out of the water. There's a gas collection pipe where the uh, air gets compressed. And then there's an outlet pipe. There's only four really simple bits, and they were used a lot in blast furnaces across Spain. There are a lots of different designs. We're going to use a linear design so we can point those bits out, but you can make compact designs, and they can be pretty much as big as you like. The infamous one, or famous one, is in um, Ragged Chute, Canada. It's got a 100 meter drop, and I think that the pipe is something like 2.9 meters across. Uh, they use it for making compressed air for running mining equipment, which is just incredible. So they're amazing machines, and it's been mentioned to me a lot to make a trump and to see what we could do with it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, to do that, We've got an awful lot of PVC pipe fittings. So let's cut some PVC and lay it out. Now it really is just gluing bits of pipe together. So I've got some 70 centimetre 10 bar PVC pipe here that I cut a metre and a half long. And at the top we can see I've put a T-junction with a glued in spigot. Because I'm going to put this on the hose. If this is being fed by another source, it's just connected to that. So I've got a barb there where I can put a garden hose on. And you notice the top is actually missing. Now this is the inlet pipe. So the water comes in here and exits at this point here. And when it comes in, it needs mixing with the air. And that's what's missing. It's this section here, it's the air section. And we'll make that in a minute. But that's the inlet pipe. And this is section two and three. So the inlet pipe comes here. And then there's an expansion here where it goes from 70 to 90. And this is where the gas comes out. It then goes into here, which is the collection pipe. And this collects the gas and it continues its journey that way to the exit pipe. So this is sections two and three. And again, you'll notice the top is missing, which is just here. And that also needs a couple of little ad adaptations before we can use it. But that's section two and, and three. And this is section four, which is the outlet pipe. So that connects to that other joint and it comes up here. Now it has this U-bend on it, not for any particular reason. It could just finish, but I want the U-bend on it. So at least the water doesn't splash everywhere. So I put a U-bend on it and that's the exit pipe. Now this exit pipe is one meter long. And you remember the entrance pipe was 1.5 meters long. That's because the exit pipe has to at least be uh, no more than 70% of the entrance pipe because there's a siphon effect that goes on. So apart from gluing those bits together to take account of what goes where, where it comes in, the only really complicated bits are the entrance port where we have to put something to let the air in so that it mixes with the water, which is what this bit is. It's an end cap and a short piece of pipe. And then, of course, the part at which we take the gas off, which is what this bit is. So of the bits we've got left to finish, this bit is probably the easiest because all we've got to do is put on a tank connector and then a whole bunch of plumbing fittings to make the pressurise out. And for that, we've got a barb for the hose, a gas valve, a T-junction, and an adapter, because these are all quarter inch NPT. And we have a pressure gauge. So all I'm going to do is use some gas type PTFE, wrap the threads, screw it all together and drill a hole in there. Then it's ready to go and we can glue it on. Now we've literally bolted those together as we arrived, we can glue it onto the top of the pressure stack. So the final part to make is the bit that mixes the air, and that goes here where the wa water inlet comes. So the water rushes down there and then there, and at this point here, we need to mix it with the air. And the way we do that is with a bunch of this. This is 5mm polypropylene, and I've cut a bunch of half metre long strips, and I'm going to glue them into there. So we glue them like that, and that'll make a cluster of these pipes, and we need a film factor, sorry, a fill factor, of somewhere between 60 and 80 percent. So we need to fill that by 60 or 80 percent. When the water comes in, it will rush around here and obviously fill that. And then it'll be forced down, and that forcing down will suck the air through that little hole there. So my job, cut the rest of this up and glue it into there. And there they are, all glued in. There's 32 of them, and it's got about a 60% fill. You notice they look like the alien's dreadlocks uh, on Predator, and they curve that way because I've got to feed them in here. And if I have to curve them the other way, they might catch there and be a bit of a pen. And we just feed them in there and glue them in with some cement. Now, 
you don't need to do the next bit, but I want to gussy it up a little bit to make it pretty. So I've got an end cap and I've uh, drilled a lot of holes in it and I'll just slot the end cap on a little bit there and that'll make my end plate. So we glue those together and that's actually the components finished. Okay, so the way this works is the water comes in here past our alien dreadlocks and while it does that, it creates a pressure difference which sucks the air into the dreadlocks and mixes the water in bubbles here. Flows down here, here we've got an increase in size and when that size increase happens, the pressure is reduced and the air comes out and collects here. As it goes along, the air separated now goes into this pit here, which is our compression port, and then continues its journey to exit at the other side. Now I've made this in an elongated version so that we could see the separate parts. As I said, there's only four parts here, but you don't have to make it this way. If you put the compression port inside of the water, then you would get a much more condensed version. Obviously the expansion part here would be something like a gas canister. So it's something like this. We have a thinner pipe for the compression, larger pipe for the water, and then another pipe here for your outlet, and that will work as a compressor. Now, it doesn't have to be outside, and obviously the pressure it can get is related to the length of that pipe. If you want to do something four to five meters, you'll get quite a lot of pressure, but you won't be able to bolt it to the side of your house. Equally, there's nothing stop to stop you burying it because it works on the relative difference of the height of the water, not at ground level. So you can bury this in the ground as much as you can have it sitting outside. Okay, that is actually quite cool. The pressure just builds up a little bit. Remember, we're only getting about 15 psi from the main, so, and that's only about, well, it's a metre high. So the pressure we're going to get in there is not tremendous at this stage, okay? It's really just to demonstrate. But the pressure will build up there, and we have a compressed gas supply here. But at this kind of height, you can you maybe blow some dust off your hands, something like that. Okay, so that was fun. And, but the pressure was obviously pretty poor. So the thing to do is to improve it. Now, as Luke pointed out, this would actually go really well in your rainwater because it's not to do with the flow, it's to do with the mixing of the air with the water as it passes through, and then obviously the weight of the water so that it can compress it. So you would be able to compress the air from your rainwater gutter because if you connect it to your main supply, you're not stealing the water from the main supply. What you're doing is using water as per normal but scavenging the compressed air as a kind of compressed air battery that you could use to run other things. Now, so without a doubt, it needs improvement to be able to do that, and I intend on looking at that, because, of course, I haven't just looked at this. And the thing that really impressed me was um, Mr. Teslonian's tromp hammer. He combined a ram pump with a tromp and was able to increase that pressure even more. So I'm going to be looking at a ram pump, then we'll be able to put that ramp pump onto that, and then we may actually get ourselves a genuine compressed air battery from rainwater and from household supply. For me, that's quite exciting. Because as I say, I made an extended version for you, but we could compact that right down as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.